Welcome to the dashboard sections. We're going to bust through or we're going to dash through several of these dashboard screens here all in the same video. See what I did there. Um, and just a couple quick notes here. All these numbers are going to be calculated fields, so there's no need to go in and change them. Again, you can you could come in and change the numbers to try and make someone very impressed by your numbers, but you'll mess up the spreadsheet, so please don't do that. The only thing you should be clicking on and editing within this entire sheet is the year field. So we're, we can come up here right now, we're looking at 2015 numbers. We can change this to do 2016. And again, if you're set up uh, under the formulas tab in the ribbon and you go under calculation options, if you're set up for automatic, when we change the year here, you'll have to wait a you know, second or two and then the numbers will update. If you're like me and you've got this set to uh, manual and you change the numbers to 2016 and nothing updates, that's because you need to come up here and click on calculate sheet so now you know what's happening and you can make uh, informed decisions. Again, I like it to be set to manual. It just allows me to make tweaks and edits and, and play with the data. You might just wanna leave it on automatic uh, for what you're doing. We'll go ahead and put it back to automatic for the purposes of this. Now remember, this is just a portion of, of my sales. I think sales are very personal and profits, so I don't share my actual figures. I've paired my uh, actual data down to about two dozen sources, and I've included those here so we can get a feel of how this spreadsheet works. But this is not my entire business, um, and again, just want to give you a feel of what's working here. Uh, when it comes to sales, let me show you some of the data you can pull here. So you can pull any given year, and you're going to see some data up top, so the overall sales number, your average per month, your net profit, and we'll get to that in just a second, as well as your average net profit per month. So 1300 bucks in this case, uh, you know, for many of you could pay a mortgage, depending on what part of the country you live in. Units sold for the year, and then average units sold per month, and then the average selling price and the monthly turn rate. So that's how many items you've sold out of your entire inventory each month. Now, what we can do is we get a little bit of an inventory snapshot here. So this year we started with zero, at least in the spreadsheet. We've listed 3,000 items this year, or this also includes items that were returns. We've sold 1,650 items, or they were removed from inventory. So we know we've sold 1,602, process of elimination. That means 48 items were removed. We've got this shown in different areas as well, so don't worry about that. Ending inventory, again, just a snapshot in time, 1,440 as of December 31st. Now, we have two different lines here, yellow and then blue. Yellow is going to be net cash flow. So cash flow is important because cash is the lifeblood of your business. So how much cash you have at the end of the day ultimately defines success. Sales are great. Profits are better. Cash flow is the best. So here it comes to bank deposits minus inventory purchased. So this isn't how much inventory sold. This is just how much cash you spent during this particular year. So 2015. Did you pay anybody commissions if you sold on consignment? How much money did you spend on software and supplies? and then the net number is gonna be your cash flow. Hopefully it's a positive number. Slightly different than that is net profit. Now most of these numbers are identical. Bank deposits will be the same because bank deposits are your sales minus Amazon's fees. So that's gonna be your bank deposits. You're gonna have uh, commissions would be expensed out as well because there's nothing to, to depreciate or amortize there. Software and supplies, again, we're assuming we can deduct all of that in the current year. So the only difference between cash flow and profit is based on your inventory purchased is a true cash expense. If I go out and buy $3,800 of inventory, that comes out of my pocket. That's a cash flow um, item. When it comes to cost of goods sold, the IRS doesn't let you deduct the total cost of your inventory because you haven't sold it yet. You need to match, it's called the matching principle. You need to match the cost of your inventory or the cost of goods sold to the sales as they happen. So in this case, we know we've listed about 3,000 items and sold give or take 1,600. So we've sold just over half of our items. Now what this does is if you've got all your data entered properly and your costs entered properly in your listing data, it now pulls for every sale, it assigns a cost of goods to it. So we're basically gonna be able to expense that portion for tax purposes. So that's the main difference. If you have other accounting questions, I would highly recommend Anna Hill's accounting group on Facebook, you can track her down or reach out to me and I'll point you in the right direction. She answers a lot more questions and goes into great detail. Now, if you scroll down, you get a little bit of the eye candy or some of the, the nice charts that help you understand your business. So what, what this is, is this is just, these are months one to 12. So nothing fancy there, it's just January through December. So we can easily see here's our sales in every single month. August, if you sell books, August is textbook season. So you get a lot of sales there. You typically see a lot of sales in January as well. 
Um, but I had just started the business uh, in this hypothetical example, so not much sales there to speak of. Now you can kind of get a rough feel. You see that it's fairly slow in the early part of the year, especially as you're building your inventory. You see a lot of growth happening as you approach textbook season. Then you come back out of that and got a little bit of a bump in December. You can come down, so that's dollars sold. You can see units sold here as well. And again, you see the nice big uh, uh, area there in, in August as you're selling a lot for textbook season. ASP is average sales price. Um, if you understand your margins, you know that the higher your average sale price, the higher percentage of every book goes back in your pocket at the end of the day. So I like to shoot for about a 20 to $22 ASP. In my example here, you see it's a, just a little bit lower than that, but you can see how it does on every single month and, and see if you're hit, hitting your goal. Um, units listed versus units sold. So the blue chart is how many items you've listed every month. So you can go back and look and say, hey, am I growing my business adequately? Well, I did fairly well starting off. I did, you know, I was listing five to 600 a month in this example, which was doing great. And then for some reason in July, maybe I was on vacation or just don't have any books in this particular, in these particular sources. So you could come back and uh, the numbers don't lie. If you're measuring your, your business, you can come back and say, hey, I need to, to not have months where I'm listing zero. Um, and so that's something you can come back and take advantage of. Also in November, you can see only two items were listed. So not a great way to be growing the business there. At the same time, you can see the units sold. So you can see that over time you're growing that number. And, and as your business matures and gets more healthy, you're going to be seeing that number go up as well. So just real easy. You can see, are you growing the business in these couple months here? So the second quarter of the year, I was listing well over the number of items that I was selling. So we're growing the level of inventory. Therefore, the business is probably going to keep growing as well. And as a result from the hard work put in these three months, you can see that the numbers went up quite a bit as well. Of course, textbook season didn't hurt. In these particular months, I was actually selling more than I was listing. So my inventory was declining. And for a better way to get a picture of that is your total inventory number. So just like we talked about, as you're listing more than you're selling, your inventory is growing. So you can see your inventory grow from a couple hundred to approaching 2,000 items. And then as you're selling more items than you're listing, you can see it kind of tail off and then kind of level out by the end of the year. At some point, if you follow the 100 book a week challenge, your inventory is actually going to you're going to reach equilibrium. You're going to be listing roughly 100 a week. You're going to be selling roughly 100 a week. That point will typically end up being closer to three to four or five thousand units in inventory. But at some point, if you kind of get a straight line here on your inventory chart, that means you've achieved equilibrium. And as long as you can keep putting, you know, replacing what you've sold, you should be able to keep your business running fairly regular, regularly. Say that word five times fast. Uh, turn rate, this is how many items you've sold that month divided by your overall number of items in inventory. And we actually take an average. So we take an average in February here. We look at the number of items you had at the end of the month plus the items you had at the end of the month in January. We divide that by two to reach an average. We take our total sales and divide it by that. A typical monthly rate for me is probably 10 to 14%. You can see it's a little bit higher starting out because you don't have as much inventory. So your, your end number, your, your base number isn't as high. So it's harder to kind of see a real picture of your inventory. And you can see in textbook season as well, as you would expect, you see quite a high turn rate, which is great. Cash flow, again, above the line is going to be positive. So you can see the cash flow for every individual month. Some of these months here, I was actually buying a lot of inventory and listing it versus selling it. So my cash flow was actually negative until uh, we caught back up and started selling uh, what we did there. So again, your business might be under to start with, and that's okay. Just make sure that you're monitoring that closely. Make sure you keep growing the business. So that's it for the sales dashboard. Again, the sales dashboard here is at a monthly level. If you scroll down, I put a nice little note that says, don't delete any of these cells. I tried to hide these, but then the charts weren't updating. So this is where all the magic happens. If you want to nerd out or see what some of the, the formulas are, you're welcome to play around here, but do not edit these. Again, I'm not responsible if you delete the data and I guess you'll have to start from scratch um, or figure out how to re redo it if you do that. So again, that's just a quick snapshot of the sales dashboard. Again, the only thing you want to change is in the year. Now, the weekly dashboard is going to be very, very similar, except instead of on a monthly level, we're going to be keen in on a weekly level. So let's go back and look at uh, 2015 as well. Again, we're set up to automatic calculation, so you can see all the numbers change. You can get a feel now of, of how, much, how much sales you're doing each individual week. We've got the inventory snapshot just like we did before. And you can see the unit sold on a weekly level if you want to manage your business weekly versus monthly. And again, you can see weeks where you did list inventory. Good for you. 
or you can see weeks where you didn't, shame on you, get back out there, find some more inventory and list it. And again, you get the same charts that we talked about before and you can change those. So for 2017, we can uh, hit enter and pop out and see how we're doing. Again, a very healthy textbook season and we're ramping the business back up a little bit here after the fall off after textbook season. So again, you can, you can check these out and as often as you're updating your data, you can come back in here and get some new metrics and see are you trending toward the goals that you've set for yourself. Now, one more, one more dashboard while we're at it is the comp dashboard or the competitive dashboard. And the way we set this up is it's, it's really fun to compete with yourself, especially as you have several years of data. So you can put a couple data points in here. So let's, and again, you can just add whatever you want. Now, if you add the same two years, they're obviously going to match. So you're not going to beat yourself one year versus the other. They should be uh, mere or perfect overlap. So don't do that. You want to put the older year in year one and then your comparative year in year two. And what that's going to do, it's going to pop up and let you see how are you doing. So everything in blue down below is going to be the first year, so 2016. Everything in orange will be your second year, in this case, 2017. So again, this is taken at a monthly level, and we do have some uh, legends here to help you understand what the years are in case you forget. So you can go and see how are we doing in January. Well, we sold more in, in 2017 than we did in 2016. Good for us. You can see the units sold, and again, we're, we're doing a little bit better in 2017 compared to 2016. Uh, we don't have any data from April yet, so that's just showing as a zero, and it just flatlines, and that'll update throughout the year. Our average selling price, we did better in January and February. We dropped off a little bit in March uh, compared to last year, so again, it's a, just a healthy way to compete. Units listed, you can kind of see how you did. Right now, we're, we're, we're we're outflanking last year, we're doing better, so our sales should theoretically be higher as we go throughout the year. Your total inventory, so we can see how it you know, ebbed and flowed throughout 2016. Right now we're a little bit higher than where we left off in, 27, or in 2016. Um, and you can see again, flat line because we don't have data for the rest of the year. Turn rate, you know, how are we doing? March was much more healthy than it was in, uh, in, in March of 2016. And again, that's just a, a quick snapshot of your inventory. And you can plug in any two years that you want. We could actually do a 2015 to 2017 if, if that was helpful or you wanted to, to be, feel really good about yourself, especially if you had a small business starting out. So those are the dashboards. Again, nothing to change in there. Um, all the magic happens down below. So again, put a little friendly note. Don't delete any of these. Uh, you're just going to want to stay up here. Just change the years on any of these individual tabs. And that's it for the dashboards.